The fact of the matter is, this is a wrestling video. So this will get six views. Hello everybody and welcome back to Fact of the Matter. I'm your host Jackson and today we are going to be discussing the potential matchup between Spencer Lee and Roman Bravo Young, RBY for short. Getting into the hype of this match, last year Spencer Lee and RBY both held the longest active win streaks in NCAA, with Spencer Lee being number one with, 50, with a 58 mit, match win streak, and RBY being number two with a 56 match win streak. They would both go on to lose their streaks, with Spencer Lee losing to Matt Ramos in the semifinals by a last second pin, and RBY losing to future world champion Vito Arujao via a 10 4 decision. Leading up to the Iowa-Penn State duel, there was a lot of speculation that Spencer Lee was going to go up a weight to wrestle RBY, which is when the talks of them wrestling really... I remember me personally talking about this with my roommate, and he was pretty excited about it. However, Spencer would stay at 125 and Tech fall his opponent, and RBY would pin his opponent. Today, RBY is wrestling for Mexico, and he qualified Mexico for the Olympics at 57 kg. USA has yet to qualify the 57 kg weight class as Zane Richards lost his match to fellow American Darian Cruz. And we will have one more chance to do so after the Olympic team trials where Spencer Lee has to win to represent America. He has a murderer's row ahead of him, including world champions Thomas Gilman and Vito Arujao, with other top wrestlers like Zane Richards, Nick Siriano, Nashawn Garrett, Dayton Fix, and more. However, I believe Spence Lee can get it done and represent America. If he does that, he goes to file chance qualifiers, where he ha will have to place top three to qualify the weight. And without further ado, let's talk about each wrestler, their styles, and their accomplishments, and then break down the matchup to see who wins. RBY is a top-level wrestler, being a two-time NCAA champion with wins over notable names like Austin DeSanto six times, Dayton Fix two times, Jack Muller, future world champion Steven Micic, and even former UFC Bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling. RBY is known for being one of the fastest, if not the fastest, wrestler in America as the style revolves around his speed and being able to get to a move or your leg before you can react through duck hunters, re-attacks, or just speeding to your opponent's back through fast redirections. RBY also has insanely good footwork. RBY would be known as the dominant cruise of footwork in wrestling for you MMA fans. His footwork allows him to get closer to his opponents and allows him to defend against attacks easier. He did a video session explaining some of his footwork, and I will link that video here so he can explain it in his own words. RBY has one of the best reaction times and has great timing as he was able to time when Jack Muller was going to shoot on him and when he did, he jumped over him and got the takedown. RBY is one of the fastest and most technically accurate wrestlers in the world, giving him a near-unstoppable offense and amazing defense. However, he is beatable. Getting into his weaknesses as a wrestler, RBY tends to do poorly against someone that has high-level scrambling ability, as that is what cost him in his match with Vito as RBY lost a bunch of 50-50 positions. However, this was mainly shown in folk style, which is the style he will not be wrestling Spencer Lee in. However, we did see a flaw in his freestyle, as he can be turned when on bottom, as we saw in his match against Pedro Majesus. If you get someone who is very good at turning people, that could end the match very quickly. However, we have only seen him get turned once, and we will have to wait to see how he does against better competition. 
Recently, at the senior level, RBA wrestled at the Pan American Olympic Qualifiers, or Pan Am Olympic Qualifiers, where he would place in the top two. For those wondering, at the Pan Am Olympic Qualifiers, they don't wrestle the first place match, meaning he could only place top two at the highest. This also means he has qualified the weight for Mexico and will be going to the Olympics this summer. Now that you have a brief rundown on RBY, let's get into his opponent, Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee is another top-level wrestler, being a three-time NCAA champion and being a three-time age-level world champion. He has notable wins over names like Nick Pinsonini four times, future world silver medalist Sebastian Rivera two times, Nathan Tomasello three times, Pat Glory two times, Nico Megalutis two times, Nick Soriano, Jack Mueller, Brandon Courtney, Drake Ayala, Matt Ramos, Darian Cruz, and future world champion Vito Arrugio. Spencer Lee is a two-time Hodge Trophy winner, which is the wrestling equivalent of the Heisman Trophy in football. For those who don't know what that is, it is an award you get for being the pound-for-pound pound best college wrestler and for having the most dominant and best season in college. Spencer Lee is regarded as one of the most dominant wrestlers, as he doesn't just beat his opponents, he dominates them, either winning by a technical superiority, which is a mercy rule, or by pin. Spencer Lee is known for his strength, as he is one of the strongest wrestlers at his weight class, with opponents and training partners saying he is as strong as a wrestler two weight classes higher. But strength isn't everything. He is one of the most versatile wrestlers, as he is top level at the three main styles of taking your opponent down. He has mastered the double leg, the single leg, which puts him at a great advantage. Mastering all three and not relying on one is huge in wrestling, as you can mix them up. We saw this in action in the 2019 U.S. Nationals, where he took everyone down with a high crotch leading up to the finals, then in the finals only used a single leg to take his opponent down, which threw off his opponent. However, taking the opponent down isn't his only skill. His top game is feared, as he has one of the strongest top games in the world. In college, his opponents, when given the opportunity, were afraid to pick bottom against him as he was too dangerous to have on your back. This has translated into freestyle as he easily turns all of his opponents to their back, finishing the match almost instantly, with some matches only lasting 30 seconds. Now, all this offense is good. However, if he can be taken down at will, what can he do? Well, Spencer Lee has a very strong defense and is very hard to score on. And even in scrambling positions, he tends to come out on top, making him nearly impossible to take down. However, even if you can get him down, he has never been shown to be turned in his life, even against people who are top tier at turning like Vito Arrugio. Though Spencer Lee is a top-tier scrambler, he is not the best, and we saw in his losses to Sebastian Rivera, when someone is better than him at scrambling, he tends to struggle more, and sometimes loses because of that. We saw in this big match with Matt Ramos that it was the scrambles that lost it for him. However, to be fair, those two wrestlers are named are some of the best scramblers in the world, and that is their main style, especially when talking about Matt Ramos. However, just like the case with RBY, this was in folk style, meaning we can't really necessarily say it's a weakness in freestyle, as we haven't seen it, especially when he was able to outscramble a very good scrambler in Vito Arrugio. However, one of his biggest weaknesses is his cardio. While in the past he seemed to have cardio that was never ending, it seems he can't even finish a two minute match. However, this could be because of injury, as he wasn't allowed to necessarily do cardio during this recent time. But, Spencer Lee has looked very healthy recently, to a point he is not wearing any knee braces. This could fix his cardio, as he will finally be able to train the way he needs to. 
Now that you know a bit of both, let's get into the breakdown. While this is a hyped match, I don't necessarily think it's close. Given the matchup will potentially happen at 57 kilograms, that means it's going to be a bad weight cut for RBY, which will be an easy weight cut for Spencer. You combine that with Spencer's ability to turn people at will and RBY being able to be turned, I wouldn't be shocked if the match ends when Spencer Lee gets a takedown. While RBY is faster, I don't think it would be enough to get past Spencer's own speed in his technique. I think the only way for RBY to win would to make it a low-scoring match. However, limiting Spencer Lee is going to be a nearly impossible task. So my final verdict would be that Spencer Lee will win by a 14-4 tech fall or an 8-2 decision win. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to comment down what I got wrong and what I got right and tell me why RBY wins or why I'm correct in saying Spencer Lee wins. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.